Hey everyone and welcome to Already Cancelled. I am Peter, that is Tara, and we are going to talk about the Twilight Zone season two, episode fourteen. It's called The Whole Truth. So full spoilers for the episode, as always. So this episode is about a used car salesman who gets a car that's haunted and it compels him to tell the truth. It's basically a liar liar, but before Liar Liar existed. I'm, I, I'd go as far to say that I'm going to assume the writers of Liar Liar probably saw this growing up and remembered it and went, I can make a whole movie out of this, but I'll make it a lawyer because that's even funnier. Mm-hmm. And we'll make it Jim Carrey, so it'll be box office gold. In 1994, that was a, a solid tactic. Uh, yeah. Or I think it was, it was around then, 94, 95, whatever, whatever year it came out. Uh, so that is the gist of the episode. That is the, the, the premise. Uh, full spoilers, of course, as always. Tara, what did you think of the whole truth? Honestly, I wasn't really that into it. No? No, it's okay. Like, a lot of the comedy ones, for me, are kind of duds, with the some rare exceptions. But this one, like, it had some good comedic moments, but for the most part, I thought it was just kind of, okay <laughs> it's not it's not got a lot going for it and that it doesn't really do a whole lot with its premise I, I will say i i generally enjoyed it it's not super memorable i think it's enjoyable enough to watch based on the lead actor i think his performance is charismatic and likable to watch that you i was always <laughs> you know yeah relatively happy sure sure like he's kind of a sleaze ball he's a the like stereotype used car salesman yes he's exactly <laughs> trying that. to sell people lemons you know it's breaking down as he's trying to sell them yeah um, he's, he's sneaking behind the car and stringing up the uh the, the fender you know he's <laughs> right yeah and it, you know there are some some comedic moments that work but this one was written by rod serling and i, I can't help but get like vibes of the fever where he had a personal experience that made him want to write about gambling addiction and he made (laughs) (laughs) and i feel like someone might have sold him like a car that was a lemon and so he wrote a twilight zone in you know to to spite them but i I feel like the the idea this episode might actually come from the ending of the episode because it's got a pretty big ending technically speaking because of the implication Mm -hmm. of what he does to get rid of the car which actually ties it into the real world in a way that I don't think any other episode of Twilight Zone has done. Oh, I, I guess I suppose technically bringing up the assassination of Lincoln is technically tying it to the real world, but that's the, that's the history. That's like, you know, a long time ago. Mm-hmm. There's, there's, the end of this episode ties it into current events, which is weird for Twilight Zone. I, I don't feel like it's done that much. That's the classic true. They show. even bring up the president, uh, the yeah. current day president, which I don't think they had done. They brought the president, they bring up they brought Cold War, you know, the Cold Wars, because yeah. uh, the whole thing is, when he decides to get rid of it, he, somehow, I mean, it's a bit far-fetched that a used car salesman is able to contact, like, representatives of a Russian or Soviet general or whoever it is, but mm-hmm. he uh, is able to sell the car, which makes whoever owns it tell the truth, to this, this big shot show, Soviet, and then ends the episode by calling the White House or calling... You know, you know, the government and saying, I'd like to speak to Jack Kennedy. <laughs> Which, by the way, I'm pretty sure you can't just phone up and say, hey, can I speak to the president? <laughs> I don't know. We see it in movies all the time. <sighs> Nothing from his car salesmen. <laughs> That's true. I mean, Jeff Goldblum can, like, sort of get into the White House. I'll buy that in Independence Day. Sure. Well, his ex-wife is, you know, his... I don't know what she is. <laughs> the press secretary, I want to say, maybe? Press secretary, yeah, maybe. Well, that sounded right. Or... But, like, the episode is generally jovial because he's, he's trying to sell this this other used car to this couple, and before he gets the, the other car, because it, it sort of, like, plays around with him jumping to the other guy who brings in the car and buying it in the middle of another sale, which is a bit awkward when you actually think about it, but it, the purpose of this is so that we hear him be slimy for the first chunk of the sale, where he's like, now you don't want a new car, that's all just soulless manufactured off an assembly line, now you want a real American mm-hmm. car that's built with sweat and tears and and, blah, yeah. blah, and all that. And then he goes and buys but, this, this used car off the old man, and he comes back, yeah. and he immediately changes his tune, he can't lie, he's like, 
well, you, 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 no, it's just, it's, you know, it's junk. You don't want this. Go, go buy a, a respectable car from a respectable establishment and get your, <laughs> get your money's worth. And he just completely changes his tune. Yeah. I did also really like the lead actor. He was, he was really good. I, I looked him up to see if I knew him from anything else. And I was sad to read that he died fairly quickly after this. He didn't really do very much after this episode had aired. I think he lived for like another year. Oh yeah, yeah, died at fifty-two, uh, 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 in nineteen sixty-three. Yeah, so yeah, I didn't really know him from anything else. I think he has the standard Twilight Zone resume of like Bonanza, Mannix. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, a bunch of, of yeah, a bunch of TV shows from the, the era and movies from the forties. He was in the original Mister and Mrs Smith. That's the, the the only title so far that's jumped out of my eyes. Uh. And he, he was, was he was fun to watch. He was uncredited in Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, which is not a big movie, but clearly his role Mr. wasn't super huge if he was uncredited. Uh that said, there was less credits in those days, so I imagine a lot more of the, the smaller characters might have went without a credit. Yeah. Well they usually played the um, credits in the beginning. That's true. Anxious to get into the film. That's true. When I'm watching a movie from the last like 30, 40 years, I'm like, well, the last five minutes will be credits. So I've got five less minutes left than what it looks like. <laughs> but when it's a movie from that era, it's like, no, I'm told the last second, right? Well, when it's the last like 10 years, it's the last 10 minutes or 15 because of all the special effects artists you have to <laughs> read there <laughs> for credits. Yeah, the bigger visual effects stuff tends to be a bit longer at the, the credits. But yeah. that is it something that's sort of changed over time. Uh, no, I liked him as well. He's kind of... He's actually... He's one of yours, by the way. He's Canadian. Uh, oh, my people. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, he, you know, he's pretty good. You know, I liked all the other stuff because one, once he's like, failed to sell the car and he's confused as to why, he ends up buying signs for all his cars that that, that say they're useless and he gets his like assistant, his, his employee, uh, to do all this stuff. He he's call- like really happy about it. Yeah. He calls his <laughs> wife... And he's like, oh, I'm not going to be home today, honey. i, I got to do inventory at the lot. And he's like, no, nah, what I actually meant to say, honey, is that I'm, I'm, I'm playing poker with the guys. And last month, when I said I was doing inventory, I was also playing poker with the guys. Uh, <laughs> and so, so, you know, and those moments, because you never actually see or hear the wife. Well, I mean, you might hear some rumblings over the phone a little bit. but You no. hear a little bit of a, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Joe, you know, this is one of these old tropes. And I'm not complaining here, because it's funny, you know, in a sort of comical kind of way but this is one of these old tropes that always gets me is this idea that wives in movies and tv shows never want their husbands to do anything that's remotely enjoyable ever yeah the old ball and chain like yeah like playing like playing cards with his friends is that is that really something that she should not want him to do i don't understand i mean if he was doing well, it like i mean if he's using real money Okay, if he's gambling, then sure, I suppose. Uh, fair enough. But like, if he's if he's, I mean, if he's doing like something like that, like four nights a week, fair enough. But he's if one night a month, he's got what his hobbies one night a month. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's, it's a bit yeah. extreme. It's a bit of the extreme side. It's a little bit, yeah. It, it's a little trippy. Yeah, that. I mean, that's it. If he's got a gambling problem, if he's like, if if you know, if this, if this actually links up with the cinematic Twilight Zone universe as the fever. And he's got a gambling problem. <laughs> then fair enough. There's clearly he gets himself into hot bother, and there's a reason for it. But yeah, it's not. I mean, this isn't like fever bad or anything like that. But like, it it's a fine episode. It's just not. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It, like, it is forgettable because I watched it yesterday, and when we <laughs> right before we recorded, I had to ask you what episode did we watch. <laughs> it's um <laughs> yeah, and, th- and that's why he isn't as bad as the wife and uh uh. Time, time enough at last home. where she didn't want her husband to read a book which is <laughs> a new level of no you will not do this thing even though you'll literally be in the same room as you do it <laughs> oh yeah. dear you must read a lot and ignore her a lot i guess well, he was trying to get her involved like let me read you stories but... he, did, no, he was he was trying to bring her into his hobby uh it was yeah. you know and maybe it's not for her although it's weird to say that when it's reading because it's such a broad things it's the, it's not like he's saying oh come you know join my guild in world of warcraft which you might hate the sound of like in much case Ugh, fair enough what a nerd. exactly yeah total nerd um <laughs> that was fun and then the uh, the employee uh then says uh oh by the way you know it's been six months since i started and he said after six months i may get a raise and then he also has to truthfully say ah i was never going to give you a raise i've never given anyone a raise 
everyone just sort of stays here until they leave because they realize they're never getting a raise and that's it and <laughs> the, the the employee punches them uh very, very comical old tv punch might i add uh to the it didn't look like it hurt that much no yeah. also to <laughs> the point really. where i was like hey uh salesman dude maybe maybe i mean he literally says this is going to hurt and then he stands and like takes aim with his fist and i'm like you, you could yeah just stand move. still while i punch you yeah <laughs> maybe, maybe jump back or block with your arm or something other anything actually anything yeah. it's not until a politician comes in and is questioned about the car that he gets the idea to uh sell it to someone who they, you know, like, oh, maybe it'd be useful to give this someone who you, we want to tell the truth. Because once he tells the... Because the politician believes him when he says he, ca- he has to tell the truth. Because he's been so honest about how bad the car is, about it being haunted, about uh, everything, to the point where he's kind of haggling him down in price instead of haggling him up. Mm-hmm. Like, all all these elements, it makes him believe that when he says he has to tell the truth, he's like, oh, that, oh, that makes sense. He sell it for, like, $25 or something. Exactly. It's exactly <laughs> what he paid for it, yeah. Because that's what he paid the old man. It was $25. So yeah, it has this big ending where apparently he's going to solve the solve the Cold War by making the Soviet have to tell the truth, uh, and that's 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 it. So it's a pretty weird, ballsy out there ending to the point where I'm almost wondering like, did that idea come first, and the rest of it's just like, oh, let's just do a fun little story about used car salesman that ends with that. Yeah, it could be. I mean, I, I imagine uh, during the time of the Cold War, it's uh, on everybody's mind. <laughs> oh sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we get a lot of uh, Cold War adjacent Twilight Zone episodes, so it makes sense that Rod Serling was very concerned. <laughs> yeah. So that's basically the episode. That, uh, the, the, the tease for next time, and I actually remember this next one because it's a very memorable episode. Uh, I expect that it's... I, th- I think it's in the better quality again, although nothing at the end here told me that, I don't think. Because because this one we didn't mention it because we've you know we've talked about it enough at this point but this is one of the uh, mm-hmm. the dreaded videotape episodes but uh, the next one's called this is number three right this was number three yeah uh, so we got three left but the next episode's called the invaders and I remember this one I remember the twist especially of this next one so I I won't say too much I will just read the description in IMDb I don't want to give anything away when a woman investigates a clamor on the roof of her rural house she discovers a small UFO and little aliens emerging from it. Or so it seems. Well, I don't remember this one, but I can guess the twist. <laughs> well, I'll check with you after the recording to see if uh, if it's what what it actually is. But uh, yes, that is the next episode. I remember it being enjoyable. Uh, this is a more horror focused episode as well, uh, which was certainly Ooh. did kind of imply at the end as well. But uh, I, I I remember enjoying this one because whenever Twilight Zone does horror, so far. It's paid off. It's only been a few times, but it's paid off so far. What are you talking about? One of your most hated episodes from season one was a horror episode. Oh yeah, but that was a convoluted. But any time it does horror where it's someone on their own in a tense situation, it pays. It's worked. That's true. Yeah. You know, the Hitchhiker, uh, the department store one, uh, mm-hmm. like all the ones where it's been something like that is is paid off. There was one. Really I think I had the holder is kind of a horror episode. Yeah, kind of. That kind of is too. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that's uh, next time. But yes, uh, by all means, let us know what you think of of uh, the whole truth in the comments below. You can uh, tell us down there. You can like and subscribe. Liking is really important on YouTube. Helps the algorithm know if you recommend us and want other people to check out our content. So please do that. Uh, also, you can support us. Where, Taryn? Taryn? Why? <laughs> Are you playing StarCraft? I have never played StarCraft in my life, but yes. Uh, Oh, yes. Uh, financially, where can people support us? Tara. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, all Terrans can check out our <laughs> our Patreon page at patreon.com slash TV and donating as little as $1 per month will get you bonus episodes of other shows that we do here on the channel, um, including the Ace, the Atomic Cinema Experiment, which is our science fiction movie review show. So if you like these Twilight Zones, maybe check that out too. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And get us on the Twitters at mail underscore fuzz, but otherwise that is us. So thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching the Twilight Zone, guys. That's not what I say. <laughs> Keep watching TV, guys. What is going on? And Have you Twilight- been replaced? <laughs> I swear, I'm still, I'm still from the same blue glow stick universe. I promise. Uh, that is a reference to an absolutely atomic cinema experiment. Go check out our review of Coherence. Uh, 
but thank you very much guys keep watching tv in the twilight zone